Hey guys, welcome to our USDA video. I have Ty the Mortgage Guy, Licensed Loan Officer. I work with him a whole lot, and we're gonna go into the basics of the USDA loan, which is very unknown, but it's a great loan program. Ty, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Tyrone Pinnell, AKA Ty the Mortgage Guy. I work with Homebridge Financial. I've been doing mortgages for 14 years right now. So uh, let's get to it. All right, Ty, so what is the USDA loan? Give me some of the highlights, then we'll go into detail. So some of the key points of this program is that it's 100% financing. That means no money down. All right, it's in restricted areas of rural development. Uh, there's no PMI, but it's called a guarantee fee. It's a lot less. And there's the income restrictions, too. So who's the USDA loan made for? USDA is a better loan if you're moving to a rural development and you don't have the down payment funds, because uh, because it's 100% financing, um, that might be the program that better suits you. So, so what's the difference between an FHA loan and a USDA loan? Um, okay, so the obvious, it's 100% financing. FHA is 96.5%. That's why you have to put the three and a half percent down. Um, with the USDA, they have a guarantee fee. It's not PMI or MIP, which is private mortgage insurance or mortgage insurance premium. There's a guarantee fee for USDA, and it's 0.35%, very small amount, oh, versus FHA's 0.85% monthly. Plus the upfront. Cost. Plus the upfront cost. So FHA's upfront cost is 1.75%. Uh, USDA is 1%. So the fees are less with USDA. Yeah, so this is an important thing to note is that any low down payment loan, except for the VA loan, which we talked about in another video, have extra loan costs that are paid monthly and some of them are paid up front. And USDA basically is cheaper than the FHA loan, which if it's available in your area, that loan, if you can qualify for it, is superior in cost to the FHA loan. All right, so let's get into the details. Uh, how do you qualify for a USDA loan? What are the requirements? Okay, so you know their debt to income ratios are not as forgiving as FHA. The actual DTI, what they call it, is twenty nine percent for your actual housing debt. So, if you, so for the mortgage by itself, it has to be twenty nine percent of your monthly gross income. 41% is for your monthly uh, debt overall that you're paying on credit. So every payment on credit and the anticipated mortgage can't exceed 41. Now, they will allow you to go to 45%, but 41 is the standard for USDA. So it has to make sense if they're going to allow you to go to 45%. And so if you don't know what debt to income ratio is, it is a big qualification factor for any home purchase or any mortgage. I have a separate video about DTI and I'll link it in the description. But basically DTI is the percentage of your income being paid to your mortgage and there's different ways to calculate it. That's why there's two percentages. One of them is factoring in all of your bills and one is not. So mm -hmm. this is all stuff you'll talk to your loan officer about, but this is information Let that me. you're gonna wanna know. Yeah, you, would, <laughs> you could call Ty and you'll find out all that info. So for USDA, the minimum credit score is a 620. So you have to have a 620 to go for it. Now, they, you might hear that there's no minimum credit score for USDA, which could be true. But the, the fact that USDA doesn't lend money, the banks do, and the banks do require you to have a, a particular score. Uh, I would say 620 is the benchmark for that. And so generally the USDA loan is a little bit harder to qualify for, you would say, yes. than FHA? Yes, yes. And, and, and for a f various reasons. Um, for the DTI, income-wise, um, not only do you have to qualify income-wise um, to, to, to handle the loan, there's an income restriction where you can't make too much household income-wise. Even the people that are not on the loan, uh, they're going to use their income when calculating this household income. And what's that number look like? I know it's different for every area, but yeah. so for our area in Burlington County, New Jersey, what's that? what are those numbers? So let's say we're in Burlington County. Um, for anywhere from a one to four member household, 
you're looking at 103,000 um, and some change. Maximum. Maximum. Cool. That's that's the max. So you know. Um, that's pretty reasonable. I mean, that's going to yeah. give you. I mean, if you make a hundred thousand, you can probably qualify for a t pretty decent house. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to go OD, then you. you know. Correct. Correct. I think, but you know, part of it is, I don't know. So let's say if you all right, let's let's break it down. Let's say if you got a four member household, husband, wife, two kids, the kids are old enough to work. You got an eighteen year old that works at McDonald's. He's making okay money. What is it? Ten dollars an hour now. Something like that. Yeah, um, and they're they're residing with you. They're going to use that too. They're going to want transcripts from them. They actually get their ages and everything, and um, that's going to be part of that calculation. So you may not make a hundred and three thousand, but between the wife who may or may not be on the loan and the kid that's working, it can't exceed that. That's right. That's a good point. So it adds up everybody in the household, whether they're on the loan or not. Right? Correct. So Correct. that's something to think about. And and it's only for the income restriction. You even though you're using their income to you know to say hey you qualify or you're eligible for for the USDA, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to affect your debt to income ratio. Uh, what are some of the other restrictions that are unique to USDA? When you're looking at conventional or FHA or VA, um, they typically allow you to buy one to, two, one to four family properties. Um, with USDA, you can't. You can only buy single family residence. You can do a condo, townhome, but you can't do a multifamily. That's important to know. Oh, that's interesting, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so there is also a location restriction based on how rural an area is. Yes. So can you talk about that a little bit? What happens is based on the census data per, per area, they, they will uh, determine whether it meets USDA's uh, requirements with population size. That determines if it's eligible for rural development. And there's a map online where you can just go and look up certain areas and it'll be shaded in. But I will say that you'd be surprised what is considered USDA because there's areas that have seemingly a good population that are kind of at least suburban you can still uh, qualify for. So it is something to look into because if you have it in your area, it's really good. Yeah. So we're in New Jersey and New Jersey's one of the most populated states per capita. And they're still... Uh, a um, significant portion of South and Central Jersey, the lower end of Central Jersey, that qualifies for rural development. Yeah, most of Burlington County, where we are mm -hmm. now, is USDA, USDA approved, so don't count yourself out. Absolutely. Look into it. Absolutely. Do you have to be a first-time homebuyer to use USDA? You don't have to be a first-time homebuyer, but you cannot own any other properties. So this is not a loan to use if you're trying to house hack or do any kind of investor <laughs> stuff. This is purely um, buying a house for your own use and your own enjoyment. Correct. Ty, so what are some other unique aspects to USDA since it is quite a bit different than all the other loan products? Yeah. One of the things that I find very um, unique about USDA um, is that this is the only program that actually goes by the appraised value not contract price. Um, and that's huge to know. So for instance, let's say if you're, you're on a contract with a property for 200,000 and you know, everything's going good and you get an appraisal and the appraisal says 220,000, they're going to go by the 220, which means is you're not going to get 20,000 cash back, <laughs> but you can allocate that extra 20 to renovation, repair, or closing costs. So that's huge and new. And when you get into renovation, it may not be anything wrong with the property. You just want to get updated, uh, new kitchen, you know, new flooring, um, you know, new appliances, um, anything that has to do with that nature, uh, energy efficiency. You know, there's a there's a long list that what you could do with the property, and uh, that's good to know. And then we were also talking about uh, previously about. Uh, being able to use that for your mm -hmm. negotiation benefit as far as the sales price. Yeah. So, so in essence, if you know, you're know you out there shopping for a house and you go out there in the springtime, 
there's normally been wars, you know. We see it a lot, That's tough out you know, there, and yeah. yeah, and then so your advantage with the USDA is that if you're a realtor and and, and you're helping a client and you see that, look, you know, the price point is 200 at this house. That's what we're going in at. The comp show, it could be slightly more. You know what? Let's go in and put the offer in. And if you need closing costs, you can roll it in on the back end. You don't have to ask for a seller concession. And that's really big because that will maybe get your offer accepted ahead of mm -hmm. someone else's. And you can still get your closing costs paid based off of the appraised value instead of rolling it in, which it actually mathematically works out the same, mm -hmm. but works to your advantage when you're negotiating. It's a negotiating tactic, correct. Which is really smart. And that's why you need smart people mm -hmm. like Ty and me or whoever you have working for you. You need smart people to tell you these little details because you can get over by using or knowing them. The USDA loan is very similar to the FHA loan. Like you already talked about the mortgage insurance or the guarantee fee. Can we go into detail about um, the differences and what the loan costs are with the USDA loan? So with FHA, one of the um, fees that, that come with it, and people will see it, some people focus on it, some people really just kind of like, hey, what's that, you know? Um, but it's the funding fee. So HUD has a funding fee for all FHA loans. No matter what your credit score is, no matter how much you borrow, it's 1.75% of the loan amount. Um, that's going to be what your funding fee is, and it's financed. Um, with USDA, it's 1%. And so this fee is applied to the closing cost, or you can roll it into the price of the loan? Yeah. So it's it's considered a closing cost, but it's still financed because it's a cost of funding. So this is why your mortgage, if you get a $100,000 house with one of these kind of loans, it will be more than $100,000. Correct. Depending on what your down payment is. Correct. A lot of people try to do the calculation. I'm like, well, I did the calculation, and it came up to this because they don't incorporate that funding fee. And then on top of the funding fee, there's a, a monthly fee. So with FHA, you get into um, the MIP. You'll, you'll see this term uh, on the documents or you'll hear it. Um, MIP is mortgage insurance premium. So with FHA, it's 0.85% monthly. That's the, that's the formula. With um, USDA, it's not considered uh, an insurance. It's considered a guarantee fee. So this guarantee fee is 0.35%. So you're saving from the, the funding fee and the monthly when you go with USDA. So basically the loan is just cheaper than FHA. If you can qualify, it's better. Um, I do wanna talk about this mortgage insurance stuff because people freak out about it. It's the cost of doing business on any low down payment loan you're going to pay something extra in those insurances for the benefit of being able to buy a house with very little money. I think it's still worth it, but we want you guys to know that, that there is additional cost and so that you're aware. So when you get to that closing table, you'll know what the UFMIP is or the guarantee fee. And so you'll know what's going on. And that's the whole point of us doing this. Mm -hmm. So I know that student loans are a big problem for a lot of people and USDA has a different way of calculating student loan payments, which is really good for a lot of people my age and even a little bit older and younger. So uh, how does that work? Yeah, well, okay, so the standard right now in the industry is, and you'll hear this a lot, 1%. 1% of the student loan balance monthly is what's used to calculate. So uh, if I have $100,000 worth of student loan debt, they are taking $1,000 from my income per month when they're calculating my DTI, which again, link in the description box to understand that. Yep. So yeah, you're right. On 100000 it would be uh, $1,000 a month. That's already going to be factored into the, your monthly debt. And this is no matter what you're actually paying on your student loan debt. Yeah. So if you have a deferred, blah, 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 whatever's going on. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. I, I run across it to a, a, a lot. A lot of people are like, you know, well, I'm in an IBR program, the uh, income base for payment, or mine's deferred, or it's in forbearance, or you know, I'm still in school. Care. They don't care. Well, the, the thing is, you know, a lot of people don't realize, like, it could be deferred, but you're about to enter a contract for a 30-year mortgage. 
And at some point, you're going to have this payment. And they want to make sure you can still afford it. Even though you got exactly. crappy student loan debt that they need to get rid of. I like. know, I know. And it's like, so they say, okay, look, you know, we don't know what you're um, going to be in the future. But for right now, this $100,000, we are going to use 1% of that because you might have a fixed payment at some point, And this is comparable to what it would be. But USDA is using... 0.5, right? 0.5%. Okay, so that goes into, so FHA, the 1%, all other programs, 1%. USDA is 0.5%. It doesn't sound like a big difference, but it really is, um, especially for the fact that USDA, their tolerance level for their debt-to-income ratio is not the same for FHA. So it does help people qualify more so. So it might be normally harder to qualify, but if you have a lot of student loan debt, mm -hmm. it actually might be your only choice versus uh, FHA. So yes. that's really good information to know. And yeah, I don't absolutely. think a lot of people are talking about that. So. They're not. They're not. And a lot of lenders don't even bring up USDA um, as an option, even though you might be in a rural development uh, area. They don't bring it up because they're not privy to the program. That's, that's another big thing, and that's why we're doing this kind of stuff. And seriously, if you have questions, our information is in the description box. You should reach out because a lot of, if you call certain banks, they're just not set up to do this type of loan mm -hmm. because, you know, it's it's less common, there's more rules, et cetera, et cetera. But um, it could really be a lot better for you. So, again, make sure you're getting the right information, and that's why we're doing this stuff. Absolutely. The USDA loan is really unique, but one of the issues that it does have that is not how FHA works is that they do run out of money and they will stop lending. Um, do you have any stories or issues that ever happened with that? Yeah, I actually do. Um, I've been doing USDA program for about seven, eight years right now. And I do recall one time that we were about to do the loan, they wanted a contract, and um, so, so the rural development program is still a branch of, you know, uh, the government funding. Yeah, the meat funding. packing or whatever yeah. they do. I don't yeah, know. well, yeah, it's like agriculture. <laughs> so the, the United States Department of Agriculture, but rural development is a part of that. It's it's umbrellaed off, and their funding actually comes from that program. So, you know, there was a time, especially around the government shutdown that they actually ran out of funds and you couldn't write any loans, but we were already in the middle of a loan. And, you know, um, what happened with that scenario, they ended up not wanting to wait and we ended up going with a different program. But it can happen. It definitely can, and it's important to know that. It's rare, but that actually can happen, and mm -hmm. I've heard of that happening to people, so mm -hmm. that's something to look into. I still think it's worth doing, but Absolutely. you gotta watch out for that. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, so that's the video. I hope this information was helpful. If you have a specific question that you don't want to put in the comments, reach out to Ty or myself, and we'll get you the answer. Our information is in the description box. Again, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you want to show support and show that this video was helpful, like and subscribe. It really helps us make more content like Absolutely. this. And that's pretty much it, guys. See you.